Hello, Sam from Tool Hut here today. Tool Hut is uh, the leader in the industry in diagnostics equipment. We carry everything for, from programming to scan tools to scopes. We do training on site or over the internet based on your location. I'm a mobile programmer, mobile diagnostics guy, mostly cover in the state of Michigan. And today I wanted to go through circuit testing. These are errors that I think a lot of techs make in the field, not from lack, from lack of knowledge, but mostly because they've chosen the wrong piece of equipment in their diagnostic strategy. So the diagnostics procedure, the circuit testings that I wanna talk about is testing the fuses. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, we're going to start with the procedure for testing fuses, powers of grounds at modules, and then the proper tool for testing components that are activated or driven by the PCM. So stay tuned here and we'll get going. Uh, the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about the equipment that I've chosen to go through and the testing today. I'm not pushing one brand over another. I just want you to know uh, most of these are generic pictures. They're not pictures of stuff I own. So I'm, this presentation is not about selling equipment. It's about giving you some knowledge so you can choose the right piece of equipment for your diagnosis. I think the first step in any good technician's toolbox is knowing the equipment that he's got. So I strongly suggest testing the equipment that you've got. See what kind of amperage it draws. So you know when you hook it up to a circuit how much amperage is being drawn. And start with the LED test light. The LED test light, in my opinion, is the worst invention ever to hit the market. Uh, it is not good for circuit testing. It's probably good for doing voltage. Uh, I used to have one. It misled me so many times I threw it in the trash. So. I think that's the, just for what it's worth, I no longer use an LED test light. I can't trust it. The second one is the power probe. Now, I like my power probe. I carry the power probe uh, for customers. I have three of them. So I like my power probes. But for circuit testing, it's no good. Do not use it for circuit testing. The power probe definitely has a purpose in the market but it is not for checking for circuit integrity. The third one is just the good old DVOM. Uh, it's good for amperage, good for ohms, checking for voltage drop, stuff like that. Uh, but it is not a good tool to use for testing for circuit integrity. Good old test light. This is just your cheap incandescent bulb test light. This is a good tool for testing fuses, and it's kind of a good start for low amperage circuits. Um, I use my test light quite a bit as a, as a starting point, but there's many times that I'll go to a different tool that draws more amperage. So I think it's a good starting point. Uh, this is one of my favorites, the halogen headlamp. Uh, I've made a couple of them, I got three or four of them in my toolbox at all times. You can make the leads any length you want, put any kind of clamps you want on the end of them. Um, it does put a load on the circuit. Not a great load. Uh, they dr draw about about two to three amps on the bright circuit. The good thing is if you get the dual filament bulbs, you can activate both filaments at the same time and really draw up your amperage. But my favorite of all, is the good sealed beam headlamp. These are five to six amps, especially if you get the double filament bulbs for these. Um, any wire I have found will carry five amps. So I don't really care what the gauge of the wire is. Remember, we're not doing this for long periods of time. We're mostly trying to see this integrity of the circuit that we have. And then there's the Load Pro. I own a Load Pro. Uh, I've had mixed results with it. 
I know somebody's probably going to kill me for doing this, but it's not really a review on the Load Pro. If you've got one and you're comfortable with it, just make sure you understand the results you're giving it. I'm going to give it a neutral rating for right now. I'd like to start with the simplest of tests in my opinion, fuse testing. This is the place where I believe that the if you start with the wrong tool, at this point your diagnosis from here on out is going to be incorrect. So let's talk about fuse testing a little bit. First of all, I don't like pulling the fuses out of the fuse box. Uh, to start with especially so I like testing them in the box and you should have power at both ends and most fuses have a spot on the back of them so you can so you can put a test light or a test device so our digital voltmeter is not good for this again it will tell you voltage at both sides of the fuse but it's not drawing any amperage and this is where I see most technicians have trouble because they've used the wrong tool uh, to start their procedure here. So let's talk about the next one. The next one is the LED test light. I've already explained to you my feelings on the LED test light. Uh, the Load Pro I don't think has a sharp enough point to get into a fuse, so I wouldn't wouldn't trust it. The power probe, absolutely not. This is not a good place to use the power probe. I like the incandescent test light for this, for testing fuses. It draws just enough amperage that you can tell if the fuse has integrity. The sealed beam, I guess you could probably use the sealed beam if you had the right ends on it and it was convenient and easy to use. Um, so I'm going to give it a question mark. Same thing with the halogen light bulb. It's going to depend on what you got on it for leads. Uh, the test light works just fine for testing fuses. Okay, so let's talk about testing for power and ground at any module. I got an ECM on the page, but it, this really goes to any module. So we, before we replace any module, one of the things we need to know is does it have power and ground? So. It, just knowing if it's got power and ground isn't really good. We really want to know if it's got integrity for power and ground, right? So, again, we're going to start with the digital voltmeter. This is not the right tool, in my opinion, for the job. The LED test light, I'm not going to dwell on it. Nope. The Load Pro, uh, I think this would probably be a good place to use the Load Pro. But like I said before, I've had mixed results with it, so I'm going to give it a question mark. The power probe, absolutely not. There's no way I would use my power probe for anything other than providing power and ground at my tester. Uh, so if I'm going to use my power probe to do this, I'm going to be lighting another device. I also don't think this is a good place to use a test light. Uh, it, you have questionable, you're not drawing a lot of amperage, you are drawing some amperage here, but really we need to know if we have power and ground integrity. So I like using a sealed beam headlamp here or a halogen headlamp here. And that's uh, my opinion of the best way to do it. If you can get a sealed beam and a halogen headlamp to light or one or the other to light it's your circuit. I know for a fact that I've got circuit integrity. And using the other devices, you may be putting a module in a vehicle unnecessarily. And as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Hope this video is helpful to somebody. At Tool Hut, we carry all the equipment you need for doing diagnosing, scan tools, power probes, test lights. Uh, unfortunately, I don't carry the sealed beams or the halogen headlamps. You can get those at your local parts store, though. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when I release new videos. A thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm good with it either way. Comments. I try to respond to comments as fast as I can. Have a great day.